At the club the young lady, Cassie, greeted her audience on the stage, bursting with liveliness. She sang passionately and lively, making her band the center of the attention in the club. The audience cheered for their band as the song finished, as she introduced herself. However, the power on the stage went out only after one performance. Cassie pointed out it was Billy, the owner of the very club they were performing at, who pulled the plug. She wanted to perform longer but still greeted her audience a cheerful goodbye. After her performance, she put on her apron for her job as a waitress in the very club she performed at, thanking their audience leaving the club as they applauded her for the great music. Nora, Cassie's friend and bandmate, pointed out at a group of people behind her. They were the Marines. Cassie took a deep breath preparing herself for all the trouble yet to come. She was not a big fan of having Marines at the club, in fact referring to them as chaotic evil to her friend. However she was overjoyed as she suddenly heard a familiar voice behind her back. It was Frankie, her oldest friend since childhood. She almost jumped on him with excitement and hugged him, overjoyed seeing him at her work. She introduced him to her friend Nora, telling her that they grew up together, and that she was his babysitter back then. He turned to his friends, telling Cassie that they were about to be deployed in Iraq in two weeks, and came in the club to loosen up a bit. Nora mentioned that her friend Cassie has a thing for military boys, just to mess with her, expecting some fun to follow up. Cassie then walked up to Frankie's friends asking what they wished to drink today, and that the first one will be on the house. All of them asked for tequilas, while one stood different from them asking for a coke, catching her attention. The boys teased him, while she went to get their drinks ready. Frankie noticing his friend Luke looking at Cassie, told him to drop the idea of hitting on her that she was like an older sister to him. Nora overhearing all of this added that she was just kidding back when she said she was into them. Cassie came up with the drinks they requested. Hearing Nora talk about Cassie's dislikes, one of the Marines tried to flirt with her, however crossing the line. This got Cassie furious over the group and walked away. Noticing this, Luke decided to walk over to her. He approached her, apologizing for his friend Armando, telling her that he has a big mouth, and they were about to be deployed very soon. However, she was still not convinced that it was a good enough reason to justify him crossing the line. She went on to point out that he is probably the same as that guy. He chuckled, telling her how predictable she was, and went on to argue on her thoughts about his friends and the military. She walked off, telling him she wasn't interested in arguing with him and went on to hang out with Nora. Nora told Cassie waving to one of the Marines, who apparently looked like he was 12, asked her to reconsider her stance on them, and that she will receive an amazing health insurance on marrying him. Cassie and Nora laughed over the man's terrible flirting skills when her phone rang. She asked Nora to cover for her, for a couple of minutes checking her phone. Cassie went outdoors. She sat outside the club in her old car and put her bag over the letters on her seat. They were invoices from her landlord regarding her due rent. She took out her device to check her blood pressure. She dosed herself with insulin, some of the last of it left with her. Later that night she was negotiating to the cashier at a pharmacy to prescribe her with more doses of insulin for her diabetes. Unfortunately for her, the insurance did not cover for the extra doses that she so urgently needed. The cashier told her that she could get another dose but it had to be from her own pocket, a hefty amount of about $500, which she very clearly couldn't afford. Cassie's mom came up to the cashier. She asked her mom if she wanted to pay. Her mom, noticing that Cassie didn't have enough to pay for her medicine gave her some money, telling her to put her health as her first priority. Cassie didn't want her mom to pay but she felt comforted at the same time getting the money. However, taking a closer look she saw the amount was still not enough for her to afford the doses. She convinced herself to make it to Friday without any more doses and left the pharma. On the next day, Luke was casually running on the road when he heard a screeching sound. It was a truck coming straight at him. He managed to move out of its way in time, running inside an underpass. As soon as he got out of it, the truck followed him again. Noticing he wasn't going to make it, he swiftly jumped over a fence when the truck almost rammed him into a corner. He heard Jono, who came out of the truck. He was impressed to see his old friend in such a good shape, climbing up the fence. Jono was actually quite surprised that Luke got into the Marines, telling him he didn't really think that Luke would pass the urine test. He told Luke to get in the car and have some fun with the substance he had in there for him. Luke said no to him, telling him he's clean now in the military. Jono at first told him that it's good for him that he is getting his life back together. But he reminded Luke that he still owed him 15 grand back since the old days. Luke assured him that he will pay him some amount before getting deployed next week. Jono agreed to wait till then, but threatened him of his family's well-being. He told him he was only playing with him, but it was very clear to Luke that none of it was a joke and he was a dangerous man. Back in her neighborhood, Cassie and her mom went to her place, where her mother saw another one of her rent invoices on her door. While Cassie grabbed her broken doorknob and opened the door with it, her mom asked her why was she living like this with her life and her rented home falling apart. She wanted Cassie to go back to her old house where they could live like they used to. When she was a kid, she told her she was bartending, delivering food, playing gigs, 
and gave piano lessons to her landlord's daughter in her spare time. She was constantly exhausted and worried with her health which she doesn't have any cure for. Hearing all this her mother sat down and broke into tears. She blamed herself for her daughter's conditions, that she should be the one providing for her needs, but is simply not capable of it. Cassie sat down close to her wiping her mother's tears. She told her she was alright and she loved what she did, and hoped that everything will turn out to be just fine in the end. She kissed her head telling her it's going to be alright. The same night she went to her club for another performance with her band. She was singing as usual till she suddenly felt out of breath. She tried to continue singing, but eventually had to get off the stage. She felt exhausted and dizzy, walking out of the club almost falling to the ground. She sat down on the ground, grabbing her needle and filling it up with the last vial of insulin she had, and injecting herself with it. She felt better and came back to her senses, when something caught her attention. It was the badge of Marine Corps on a window. She smiled recalling something she heard from her friend just a couple days ago that could help her. The next morning, Cassie went to her old friend Frankie's home the first thing in the morning. She knocked on the door calling out to Frankie, but it was Luke who came out of the door. She was surprised finding him at her old friend's place. He tried talking to her but she ignored him and went straight to Frankie. They greeted each other as she pointed out that his mother had prepared a big goodbye party for him before leaving for Iraq. On asking what brought her here she asked him for a favor. She wanted him to marry her. He laughed hearing this from Cassie. He thought she was joking with him, asking her if she was okay. She told him that she actually wasn't. She found that she had diabetes six months ago, and told him her financial conditions. Luke was standing outside the door, eavesdropping on them. She wanted him to marry her so that she could benefit from the health insurance that came along with the marriage agreement, especially for the marine spouses. Luke barged in the door, telling them that his father is a retired military police officer, and from that he knows that this is a very common scam. Cassie told him that she didn't want his advice and told him that it would be perfect for both of them, which for her was the perfect marriage opportunity. He still held on to his word, saying that if she did this, she will be illegally stealing from the government and committing a fraud. On this note she said to him in the eyes that she has no problem in committing a fraud against the government which does not give a shit to people like her mother, who paid taxes for them to be treated less than people, just because they were immigrants. Frankie suggested his friend to not get into an argument with her that it won't end well for him. She shut him outside again and asked Frankie if he was in for their agreement. However, Frankie said no to her saying that his girlfriend will not understand him having a wife. She asked him surprised about the news that he was back with his high school girlfriend since fifth grade. She was happy for him but upset for herself. Frankie wished to help her if he had any money but he didn't had it at time. She told him it was alright and she will manage something. Luke asked Frankie about her parents and why couldn't they help her as they watched her leave his house. He told him that her mother struggled to make the ends meet in the first place and her father left them a long time ago leaving her and her mom alone to suffer. Luke was taking a run again the next morning when he ran across his old garage. He saw his father and his nephew, Spence. His father was fortunately leaving for somewhere in his truck. After he went away, Luke came closer to the garage where Spence saw him hiding. He went up to him and Luke ran to him playing with him for a bit. The kid then took his uncle to his mom and dad. Spence's mother was surprised to see him assuming she wouldn't be able to see him before he is already deployed to his next mission. She was surprised to notice how much built up he was now when she hugged him, in such a short period of time. Luke turned around to see his brother standing there. He uttered that Luke looked like their dad with that military haircut, as they hugged each other after a long time. He asked what brought him here after all this time and that he could see he was worried about something. Luke told him that he owed someone money, his brother took a step back telling him that they have been here once, and that he cannot help him. He asked Luke if it was about Jono again, which he nodded to. Luke said there wasn't any options for them aside for paying. His brother proceeded to ask what will be the consequences if they couldn't pay, and will it come to his family? To which Luke was silent, making it pretty clear for them. Luke ran over to Jono's place to give him some money, so that he leaves his family alone while he was in the military camps. Jono got furious finding out that it was only a couple hundred bucks when Luke owed him 15 grand. However Luke told him that he had a plan. Losing his patience he pulled out his gun pointing it at Luke to better explain this plan to him, telling him not to make him use the gun. Terrified, Luke explained him the plan that he knew a girl who needed insurance that comes from being a spouse to a marine. The policy would pay him enough to repay his debt to Jono once and for all. The next day, Luke contacted Cassie, asking her to meet up at a restaurant so that they can talk over the agreement. He told her they will need a real story and stick to it. He himself made up a story about them getting together and asked Cassie to stick to it. Cassie was in a bit of a surprise, that why did the man who was lecturing her not to commit government frauds, suddenly insisting so much on it. Luke firstly refused to tell her, saying it wasn't her business knowing it, but she did convince him, that she had a right at know how did this change come to be. He didn't tell her the entire truth about his debt with Jono, but he told her that he just needed an extra two grand at the end of each month for a while. She told him that she has a code to never say yes to blind obedience, 
and she wouldn't help him unless she trusts him enough, and that she needs this to survive while why he needed this money was probably for some worthless reason. Mocking the army. Luke got up watching her badmouth the military and was about to leave before Cassie apologized for the mockery. He sat down in front of her and they started to talk over the subject as planned. They planned over having consistent times when they talk to each other on call or on chats in case someone checks, and they will have to be in constant touch the whole time to make it seem natural. They plan that when he gets back from Iraq they will file for a divorce and they can go their separate ways. This way she can enjoy one year of Heath insurance and he can arrange the money he needs to pay to Jono. He asked Cassie to promise him not to tell anyone unnecessarily about this agreement between them, and he left the table telling her he will text her. The following day, they both prepared themselves for the wedding. Luke wore his uniform to her place, while she wore her usual attire of shorts and a t-shirt. Luke strictly told her to get dressed properly for their wedding as they needed to seem natural. She called him over to her room. She opened her door with the broken doorknob, and he waited for her while she dressed up in the other room. Noticing her guitar, he asked her if she plays it. She answered no, and that it was only to impress guys, in a sarcastic tone. It was what she did for a living and had a band for the same reason. He glanced at the mirror in her room, revealing her bare back with a tattoo on it. He shifted his focus elsewhere realizing he was looking at her half-clothed as she closed her door. He asked her about the tattoo and what it said. She said that the tattoo read, risk nothing gain nothing. It was what her grandmother told her mom when she came to America. She came out of her room dressed in a white dress, surprisingly looking pretty. They arrived at the place finding Frankie already waiting on a bench for both of them. She hugged her old friend, thanking him to be here for her, when she was reminded to the rings. Frankie handed her a ring for their wedding. She was surprised looking inside the box, it was a real diamond ring. She asked Luke if he actually bought the ring for their wedding. Frankie told her that it was him who brought the ring over for them. That it was meant for his girlfriend Riley and has been saving for it since almost forever. She thanked Frankie for it but she couldn't bring herself to accept this precious gift from him. He assured her that his mom will not let him marry till he was already 21 and to keep the ring with her till then. She couldn't thank him enough for this when she suddenly heard someone announce both of their names, Luke Morrow and Cassandra Salazar. The priest asked Luke and Cassie to pledge to be with each other in both sickness and in health to which they both said yes. They put on the rings for each other and stood still for a couple of seconds, when the priest told them to kiss each other. Luke and Cassie then shared a soft kiss and everyone around them started clapping for them, congratulating the newlywed couple. All of Luke's marine friends and their close one were sitting together for feast to celebrate the wedding. They were drinking, eating and shouting their battle cries, and everything was going just fine when Luke's friend Armando made a battle cry about eliminating all the Arabs. Cassie was taken aback by this and argued him about his barbaric nature and mentality. This eventually grew into a heated argument. Everyone started to get uncomfortable with both of them fighting. Luke tried to calm down the situation and told Cassie and Armando to sit down and stop arguing over no real reason. They both calmed down however, this enraged Luke who walked off of the table slamming. Frankie gave Cassie a gesture telling her to go check up on Luke and bring him back to the table. Luke was standing outside on along the fence. Cassie approached him from behind. He was mad at them both, that why couldn't she sit straight and not talk about her ideas for one day. He was irritated by her stubbornness over her ideas, and she was over how they only ever thought about guns and war. They both were arguing when Luke noticed that his colleagues were watching them fight. He asked her to hug him and pretend they were working over their differences. They hugged each other till they felt it was enough for the others to trust that they were all right with each other. Later on all of their friends went to a hotel to stay for the night. Luke and Cassie found there was only one bed for both of them when entering the room. Closing the door Cassie started to mock Luke, that he was scared, to which he admitted that he was. Cassie sat close to him to comfort him, and went to change her clothes when he called out to her. She came close to him intensely kissing him, with passion. They both stripped away each other's clothes and spent the night together, making love in each other's arms. The next morning waking up in the sheets she saw that Luke was already on his feet and had been like that for the whole night. He couldn't sleep due to worrying and got ready for his deployment, asking her to do the same. At the military base Cassie saw the families of the Marines, crying and hugging, saying their goodbyes to their beloveds crying over seeing them leave, not even knowing if they will ever come back to them. He told Cassie that from this moment on they will be put under surveillance and need to be more careful. He gave her his brother's contact, which read Jacob Morrow. In case something happens to him, he wanted her to reach out to his brother and tell him about the marriage agreement. However, he told her not to let his father know about his deployment at any cost. They gave each other a kiss just for the sake of it, and the young man got in the bus. But his friends had other plans for the new couple. They lifted his wife up for them to share one last kiss for a long time. They kissed each other one more time and he went away in his bus where the soldiers now prepared themselves for what was yet to come. After that both of their lives started to come back on track. Cassie was treated for her diabetes and now was able to pay off her rent and her debt. She could focus more on her passion of writing and singing. On the other side, Luke got his life he always dreamt of, fighting for his nation. 
and he too was now able to pay off his debt to Jono. They both wrote messages to each other, as planned. They both wrote about their likes, dislikes, and a little bit about their pasts. She told him that music was her life, that she had a rough childhood but the music helped her cope up with it. That's when it became so much important to her, that although she writes what she is feeling into her music, she is terrified of singing it to other people. But now that he was with her she maybe could get over her fears. He told her about his family's past and his love for the military, how both his father and grandfather served in the military and he wanted to follow their footsteps, how pleasured he felt for serving his country. He wrote about his mom, and when she got ill with cancer, how his father would stay up all night with her by her bedside till the very end. That was love for him, and he wished it became like this for them both of them one day. They video called each other with all of his close friends and a higher military official sitting right behind him. They both were desperately trying to act like a newlywed married couple in love. But here was some awkwardness in between, which seemed to catch the senior's attention. She mentioned writing a song which his friends wanted her to sing while on cam, but it wasn't prepared yet. She promised him to sing it for them later on, saying their I love you to each other with some hesitation still, as the young man went to have lunch with his mates. She got the ideas for her new song from her last call with Luke. She wrote and sewed the melody together with her band, and made a song for the soldiers and the American heroes out there. The next time she called Luke he had bruises all over his face and was seeming a bit down. He and Frankie mentioned that today was a disaster and they nearly lost a man. The men had their morals down and he said they could use something to light up their spirits. She agreed to sing her song to them like she promised and sang the most beautiful song they heard. Dedicated only to them, the ones risking it all for others. Her music and voice caught the attention of everyone out there in the camp and they all applauded her, clapping for her song after it was over. Luke proudly claimed her as his wife over the call, and she couldn't stop herself from blushing receiving all this applause. She wished them health and he thanked her once again for the song. She called him a few days later, setting up her phone on her car door, telling him that she posted her songs on some small labels and fortunately, one of them was approved by someone with a higher authority, and they liked it so much so that they gave her a slot at the local singing fest, the Oceanside Alt Fest. It was like a dream coming true for her. He was also excited and delighted to see her succeed at her work, and wished her a very good luck before cutting the call and switching on to the news regarding the war. She came onto the stage, as lively as they come, doing what she loved. She sang for the audience with grace, while her mom watched her little girl grow up to stand on her own two feet. While on the other side of the world Luke was doing patrols and guarding in the deserts with his batch mates. Some days later, Cassie left a message on his phone that she has been trying her phone but couldn't reach. She wanted to tell him she was now getting famous and people started to know about her and her band. She performed in her club and everything was now going good for her. However, it wasn't going to be the same forever. She got a call from Germany. A military officer informed her that unfortunately her husband was wounded in combat and was currently going through a surgery for his legs. Hearing this Cassie freaked out and didn't know what to do, when she remembered that he gave her his brother's number. She looked around every corner of her house, but wasn't able to find it. But she fortunately remembered the name, Jacob Morrow that was written on that note and searched the web for his address. She got to his home the next day and found it was Luke's father and not his brother. She asked if she could see her brother, but he insisted her on telling what was wrong and who she was. She later told him what the officer on call revealed to her about Luke's injury during combat, and that she was his son's wife. They reached the hospital where Luke lied injured, and saw his family standing in front of him. His father asked him why he enrolled his name, to which he replied that he wanted to prove him wrong about his capabilities. Cassie kissed him and let his family know that they were married. They decided to give the couple some space. He was annoyed at her for doing the exact same thing. He told her not to. He was worried of their future now, that his father was in the military police and now they need to pretend for longer, and be even more careful. To this she wondered how Frankie would think after finding about this mess. Luke found out that she didn't get the news. He told her that Frankie could not make it. This broke Cassie into tears and she ran away from the hospital denying the fact that her closest friend was no more. The TV commercials played his news, saying his family was proud of him. The army officials paid him the respects by doing his last duties for him, while Frankie's family and loved ones cried over their loss. Cassie later reached out to Haley, who was still crying over her beloved's grave. She gave her the ring, telling her Frankie wanted to give it to her after he got back home. He would have wanted her to have it for herself. They both cried and hugged each other shedding tears. Meanwhile, Luke saluted his friend, paying his final respects to his friend. The next day at the hospital Luke's father asked Cassie if they lived together. They made an excuse saying that they never got the time as everything happened so quickly. Jason told them that they should start the very moment then, and that he will come to their place every now and then, to help out with Luke's physical therapy, and any other needs. They both kindly refused at first but had to give in to the father's proposal. Luke's family helped them both move in together in her apartment, 
lifting him and his luggage up to three floors. They wished them good luck and left the couple to themselves. After sending everyone away, Cassie started to freak out about having to live with a guy for the first time in her life and that she didn't agree to this. Luke, however, asked her to play along so that their cover does not blow up ruining their lives. She agreed to pretend and do what it takes to save her current life that she built back from the gutter. The couple did a complete makeover of the apartment, making it seem like they were actually living comfortably together as a couple already, setting up pictures and putting his clothes in drawer. Knowing that Luke's father will be coming to check up on them from time to time, Luke even made a temporary ring for her out of his dog tag, to make it seem as real as possible. When he arrived with Luke's brother with him, they played their parts of a loving husband and a wife. Cassie continued with her music career, while Luke along with his father worked on his rehab and getting him to walk on his feet once again. Day after day he was getting better, and so was Cassie, growing her passion into her career. However, Jonna was now threatening Luke again, this time using his wife against him. One fine day when Luke was working out for his legs recovery in an open gym, he saw Cassie walking over to him. She was surprised how much better he was doing. Then he saw his brother, running behind a lovely golden dog. He asked him if he got the dog for himself. His brother then corrected him, telling him it was for him, and Cassie handed him the leash for it. The dog's name was Peaches, she was a trained dog that Luke's brother got for him to help in his recovery and assistance, on Cassie's advice. Luke wasn't happy, lashing out knowing that they were treating him like a cripple throwing the leash on the ground, which Peaches gave back to him. He later on agreed to keep the dog with him in the house on their request. Another morning, getting back after getting breakfast for both of them, Cassie came in her apartment, noticing her doorknob was fixed. She came in and called for Luke. She was astonished looking at him starting to walk already. He told her he was barely managing to walk and it was hurting for now. The couple then enjoyed a breakfast of tacos with each other. They talked and giggled taking about their different views on everything they talked about. They started coming closer to understanding each other with every passing day, playing games, cracking jokes and talked to each other. She washed his sweat off with a sponge and treated the wound on his leg. She held him close to his chest, asking him if he wants to sleep in the bed with her today, which he agreed to. The same night they slept close to each other under the same sheets. He gently kissed her forehead. They could feel themselves falling in love with each other the way they looked at one another. The couple decided to pay a visit to Luke's family few days later. He again told her to be cautious around his dad. They spent some time together with the family playing her songs on the speaker, which she felt a little embarrassed about. Spence asked his uncle to play with him while the ladies watched both their husbands play with each other. Luke's sister-in-law notices the way she looked at Luke, with love. She appreciated her for growing on him so quickly. Later at night Cassie had a show, when Luke got a call on his landline from her mother. She told him that she found her door open and her windows shattered. Hearing to this Luke came rushing to her residence, Cassie came soon after him. Telling both the ladies to stay outside he went inside the house. He was looking around the house when he got a call from an unknown number, it was Jono. He did this to scare Luke, and to let him know he was serious about getting his money back from him, threatening him with the evidence he has of Luke's fraud with the government. When Cassie came home she almost trembled and eventually fell on the couch because of malnutrition, due to her not eating properly for the past few days and her blood pressure dropping low. He grabbed her purse giving her the pack of glucose to aid her. Cassie noticed his heartbeat running like horses, she kissed him gently on the lips and laying in his arms. The next day he went to Jono, putting his wife to sleep. He came from behind him and gave him a beating to the ground. Jono kicked him on the leg and tried to get to his gun. Luke warned him never to get close to his wife ever again or he will. Him the next time, as he walked away from him, leaving him covered in blood, on the ground throwing his gun in the garbage. Luke took a bus to visit his old friend Frankie. He cried over his grave, touching the grass over his late friend's grave, missing him greatly. He told his friend that he now thinks of Cassie as her best friend and not just another person he met, and has an arrangement with. Back at her wife's home, he saw she was packing her bags. On asking why was she packing up, she told him that her mom contacted her recently about being jumped by a guy, covered in blood, threatening her mom to disclose her daughter's fake marriage and wanted to talk to Luke. He realized it was Jono. She completely lost her cool knowing that her mother was in danger because of him. He apologized to her explaining that he used to be a substance addict two years ago, that he started taking them when his mother passed away. Jono set him up and kept supplying him the drugs. That he got addicted to a point where he broke in his dad's garage and stole a 50 grand classic Corvette, which came in from his father's biggest customer. After this incident his father warned him, if he didn't pay the customer back he would turn him in himself. With nowhere else to go, he borrowed money from Jono which after that never let him live quietly. Cassie now understood why he wanted to marry her, so that he could pay back the debt that he had on him, because of his addiction. He told Cassie that he paid him back and that Jono was no longer behind him. She cried saying that he could have hurt her mother because of him that she is the only thing she had left in this world. Furious with Luke, she told him that he should now go and live at his brother's or his father's, 
as she was now filing a divorce against him, asking him to leave her place and pack his stuff, and that when she comes back she shouldn't find a trace of him here. She rammed the door close, leaving him in the house. She prepared herself for the performance, singing her lungs and heart out on the stage, the crowd going crazy watching her move. After finishing up their performance, one of the band members told everyone that we're now being invited to the Hollywood for a show. The whole band jumped and cheered in excitement hearing their dreams coming true. Meanwhile, Luke grabbed and put on his shoes for his run. He gradually overcame the pain and could run like he used to, months ago. This filled him up with joy. But it did not last long as he saw a military officer walking out of the vehicle at his doorstep. The officer asked him to pack his stuff and that he needed to come with him. Luke simply nodded, going upstairs, packing his luggage and saying goodbye to Peaches. At the hotel Cassie was staying in, her phone rang in the middle of the night. It was Luke's father, he told him that they were charged with a fraud marriage with benefits, and that Luke was currently been detained with the military police. He asked her if it was all an act, to which she replied that not all of it was fake. He cut the call, disappointed in her, thinking she was bringing his son back to him. Cassie was now freaking out of what was yet to come. The next day she showed up at the assigned court where their case was about to be heard. Soon after which, Luke also entered the room looking at Cassie. The military judge announced the several violations and accusations on the couple. To everyone's surprise, after hearing to the violation charges put on them, Luke asked for the permission to stand up and speak something. Receiving the permission from the judge, he stood and up and took the complete responsibility of all the charges over both of them, requesting the court to drop the charges over Cassie that she was innocent, and he was the one who forced her into marrying him. The court agreed to his testimony, and hence found him guilty of committing a military crime. He was sentenced for six months of prison after which he would be discharged of his duties of the military. Cassie was speechless witnessing everything that just happened. She was wondering why he would do such thing. He was now going to lose the very job he ever dreamt of. He smiled at her one last time before leaving the courtroom. The day after she was watching the photos and videos of her wedding on her cell phone, when Nora called her to the stage. She walked on the biggest show of her life watching the crowd cheer for her. Back at his home, Luke's father asked him to get ready that it was time for him. When something on the display caught his attention, it was a Purple Heart, an honor given to soldiers injured in combat fighting for their country. He thought he wasn't going to get this honor after the charges. His father then drove him to the camp, where he was about to be punished for his crimes. The concert, before she started singing, she closed her eyes realizing something. She sang a song for his beloved, with her heart. Not written, not revised, and not practiced. She put her feeling into her song, something she previously was afraid of doing. The musicians in the back followed up as she played the piano, singing about how she eventually fell in love with him, how she loved it when they talked, about how he kissed her on the forehead, how he held her in his arms till she fell asleep. Finishing up performance, she thanked her audience. She changed her clothes and swiftly went outside to her car, from where she drove swiftly to the camp where Luke was supposed to be. Meanwhile Luke was greeting his family goodbye. He petted Peaches asking his brother to take good care of her. Turning to his father, he had regret in his eyes. His father hugged his son, telling him that he was proud of him. Luke felt immense joy and love towards his father, hearing what he wanted his father to say to him one day after everything he made him go through. Just about when he was about to be taken away, they saw an old car coming their way. It was Cassie. She walked up to him, telling him that they have fulfilled every vow they took during their marriage. He tried to tell her that it is pointless now that he is being taken away for six months. She interrupted him mentioning that they were there for each other at their worst and she was ready to it for her till he comes back. For her this was real, her marriage was real and she wanted to be him with for the rest of her life. They kissed each other as he said that he loved her too. His family happy stood there smiling, happy for them. He said his goodbye to her handing her his ring, asking her to take good care of it for him, for when he comes back. Cassie wished him goodbye, putting on his ring on her finger, with the ring he previously gave her. Made out of his dog tag he went away in his van from her once again, however this time, their love was real.